a number of years ago I built a rod rack for this car right here and ever since then I've had people stop me everywhere I go and going man let me see that rod rack how'd you build that thing so uh, I've uh, given this car to my son it's now his his uh, trout mobile and I got a new car so I need to build a new rod rack I thought why don't I make a video on uh, how to build a rod rack so just so you can see how it uh, what we're gonna be building what it does is it allows you to keep your rods together so when you're going from spot to spot to spot on the river you're not breaking down your rod and putting it back together you don't have it on the roof or it's getting frozen and the lines freezing up in one of those little tubes up there it's in your car it's warm it's dry it's theft proof and your rods don't get broke off in the windows okay before you get started building a rod rack you first need to find out if your car can hold one so this is my new car and uh, it's HRV and uh, I took my fly rod to the dealership when I bought it and I made sure it would fit in there because I didn't want to have another car that can't take a rod rack so here's what you do if you're gonna check your car you get your, this is my longest rod my nine and a half foot legend elite put it all the way in there till the rod touches the glass and just lay it there like that and then we're gonna close the thing and see if it fits Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. I got about eight inches of space there, so I have plenty of room. The main materials you're gonna be using are gonna be a piece of PVC. This is the three quarter inch. I just bought it at the hardware store. And a metal tube, which I'm going to use this broomstick. If you've got a big truck, it might not be wide enough for your truck as the cross beam, but uh, yeah, you can buy some conduit, you know, the, you know, the uh, zinc plated conduit at the uh, hardware store, or you can use like this, just get a tube of any kind. So, all right, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this cross beam tube made. So, let's go back to the car and take a look. All right, as you can see, this broomstick on the Subaru fits into the slide cover for the cargo cover. One end, I just cut it off, and the other end still has the screw threads on it. You can tuck the small end in if you have to. Uh, you can also smash it just a little bit to get it to fit through the groove right here if you need to if it doesn't if your broomstick or whatever tube you buy doesn't fit here you can half smash it to get it to squeeze in here and drop into place the reason we're using metal here instead of the pvc is that the metal is rigid pvc is very flexible when you get the weight of all your rods on there this will bounce a lot but this steel tube will not it'll stay nice and stiff so the rest of it can be made of pvc so let's go take a look at the HRV and see what we're going to need to do. Okay, my HRV doesn't have the little loopy cargo cover latch right here. All it has is this slit where the cargo cover goes. So we had to improvise a little bit. So what I've done is taken my tube and smashed it on the end so that it fits in here like that. And then we'll wedge it in on both sides like this. And that fits nice and snug. So you'll have to improvise to whatever your vehicle has. The materials you're gonna need will include one of these rod holders. You can buy it at Walmart or anywhere else. So you need one of those. You need some kind of tubing or rubber hosing. You can use spline from screen doors. This happens to be some fuel line tube from remote control vehicles. So whatever you wanna use for that, you can use aquarium tubing, it doesn't matter. You need some kind of paint, preferably match the paint to your interior car color you need pvc the purple primer and then the actual glue you're going to need two bolts that are long enough to go through some pvc two bolts with with uh, hex nuts on them relatively small you're going to need two of these end caps two of the t's six elbows one other thing you're going to need is two small screws like this just two little screws that's going to be to attach this to the pvc the tools you're going to need include starting with the simplest to the more complex you're going to need some kind of drill two different drill bit sizes one to drill through the cross beam for the bolts to go through and then one that's smaller for when you're going to attach this for the screws. So just two size drill bits, measuring tape, screwdriver. I have a Phillips because the screws I'm going to install for the holder are Phillips. 
pair of scissors to cut this tubing. And the thing you may or may not have is one of these, a PVC cutter. You might be thinking it's okay to use a saw to cut PVC, but this is so much quicker and so much less messy, and you don't have to clean the edges up before you glue it. Just go buy one of these. You won't hate yourself for it. And that's all the tools. Before you cut any PVC, you're going to need to get some measurements. Once you get this bar in there, you can begin to get actual measurements of what you really need. Important measurements include the distance from the top of the seat rest to the center of this bar. In my case, it's 19 inches. Alright, one thing you need to keep in mind when you're taking measurements for PVC is that the PVC has a little stopper ridge right down here. That's how deep the tube is going to set into this once you glue it. On this three-quarter, it's about seven-eighths deep, right there, seven-eighths. So that means any measurement I take, I need to keep in mind there's an extra seven-eighths going into each tube. So for this, it's 13 and a half, so I need to add seven-eighths and seven-eighths. I'm adding one and three-quarters, so that takes me to 15 and a quarter. So my piece that goes across here is going to have to be 15 and a quarter. So I'm marking here at 15 and a quarter. Opened up the PVC cutter, lay this right on that. Alright. Alright, first thing you need to do when you put PVC together, if you don't know, is to prime inside and prime here what that does is it helps the glue really stick and stay together so that's the purple primer works for everything then what we're going to do is glue one of these ends on i think the best method is put the glue in the hole make sure it's all the way in kind of twist it a little bit so it's seasoned. you'll see it locks up pretty quick you got a couple seconds where it works now here it's important that this is parallel to this this is why i'm on the floor so when i put this on here i'm going to push it down to the floor and make it level Yeah. Push on there and then I'll push this down. Then I know those are both facing the same way, perfectly parallel with each other. Yeah. All right, I got two little pieces that I'm just going to stick in here. They're going to be plugs because I'm only trying to raise that thing two inches off the back of my seat. So I pretty much don't need any internal space. So now I've got that. That's going to go this way on top of my seat. All right, so first things first, let's try to get this thing straight on top in the middle here. And we're going to drill this in. All right, and then on this side. Okay, then we're going to put our screws in there. Here's a tricky part. Uh, the front of this is going to be skinnier than the back so these have to be 19 on center for how wide I want it in the back so it's got to be like that so obviously you don't want it like this or like this you kind of want it in the middle as best you can so I'm eyeballing it so they're going to have to go roughly like this so now I'm going to glue these This is where it gets tricky because I only got a few seconds to work with this. Make a few, uh, get it at six and 19 inches on center and not have it be whoppy jawed. All right, next I got to glue these T's on. And again, shove it on all the way, push it flat to the floor. Same thing on this side. Now I need to measure this distance for my cross beam this way. I'm measuring from the back of this where it hits the body to where it hits the body. It's about 17 and a half ish. So I'm going to go 17 and 3 eighths. All right, so I'm going to put these little stub pieces in here. All right, and I'm going to glue these on. And these have to go straight down. Turn that and make sure it's straight down. 
All right, so make sure your bolts go through the holes nicely. Slide that on. Get that started on the nut. And then here's where you need your screwdriver. Okay, so my last measurement I need to get, and it's important to get it at the very end, is I got my beam in here and my two cups. I just need to cut the piece that fits right here. But I want to make sure I get the height I want. And I do that by looking up there in the car and seeing, am I bending the rod? And my reel is touching right here. Am I bending the rod? Am I pushing on the thing? So I want to get sort of a nice mid height, like right in there. So I probably want about six and three eighths, I'm thinking. Okay, this last piece, I'm going to glue this in here, but we're not priming this in because it never gets glued. So here's the final check before we paint. Is I'm just confirming when I have these seated in there all the way that it sits right where I want, it's in the middle, that my rod will touch right here, my reel will touch here, and when it's sitting in here, it's kind of pointing right at the right at the glass, at the longest point in the glass. That way it's not touching up on the windshield or pushing down into the dashboard. So there you go. This is never gonna get glued because I need to take my rod rack apart at times and put it away. So I'm gonna paint all this when it's put together put it together, paint it so there's no paint on that joint, and then it comes in and out, you know, goes back together and comes apart. All right, standard spray paint, spray paints uh, PVC fairly well. You know, you have to just be really careful not to spray too much at once because it's a small surface, so it'll drip and run really easily. But one good can of spray paint, I got this metallic color that's Supposed to be darker gray than this, but I guess that's good enough. Okay, on this model, my first one here, we have the tubing wrapped around in a coil. And the purpose of that is to keep the rods from sliding when you turn, and it does a pretty good job. For my new one, I decided to try something a little bit different. All right, for this new one, you can see my crossbar is integrated rather than bolted to the top. And so what I did was I cut a short piece of hose, and like I said, you can use spline or aquarium tubing, whatever you want. And I stuffed a little piece of plastic in the end of it here. You could use uh, like a, a weed whacker cord, or I have these little pieces of tubing that work. And what I'm gonna do is wrap this around here and connect it like this. that and then the idea is I'm going to turn them around so that's on the bottom I'll connect those on the bottom and the idea is to make put those space them out I got six rod holders so I'm going to leave six spaces with a bumper on each side as well and that'll keep the rods from sloshing around a little bit I think it looks a little cleaner a little neater than the coil all right there it is all the rings in place they should be fairly snug, so you might have to do a little adjusting to make sure you get those how you want it because you just want it to keep them from sliding around. I'm going to stick my rod in the car so you can see how that works. You can look at this. I can put my rod in the car just like this. I'm not risking breaking it on anything. Set it in the holders. It doesn't flop around because it's attached right here. i got plenty of room to see over top of it. I'm sitting in the front. And... Off I go to the next fishing spot.